Hello, I'm Jillian Trainer. Welcome to this week's edition of Community College News, news for all six NBCC campuses. I'm in the landscaping department at the Woodstock campus. In this week's show, tips that could save you money as we get closer to Christmas, and we'll give you an inside peek at some programs here at the college. But first, there may not yet be snow on the ground, but that is not stopping towns and cities from getting in the festive spirit. The first town in our province has a new name for its celebrations. Martin Poirier has the story. Christmas is only about five weeks away. Here in Woodstock, what used to be the Victorian Christmas has been renamed. The town is now preparing for New Brunswick's first town Christmas. The town crew has been working very hard over the past couple of weeks to uh, put up all the decorations. Uh, there's several trees, uh, figurines, uh, bows go up on the lampposts. Um, a lot of the downtown merchants take a lot of time, decorate their windows, uh, their storefronts. The downtown core doesn't seem very festive at the moment, but starting Friday, November 18th, the streets will glow with holiday cheer with the Festival of Lights. The Special Olympians Torchlight Parade with Santa kicks off just before 7 p.m., followed by lighting ceremonies. A choir will also sing Christmas songs on the waterfront and hot chocolate will be served in the square. The night's highlight will be fireworks at 7.30. Other events are planned through Christmas. On November 26th, uh, Saturday night from 7 to 9, up at the old Victorian, um, or sorry, the old Carleton County Courthouse, we will be having our annual fundraiser. It's a concert that we put on every year um, promoting uh, old time Christmas. Merchants will also have special shopping hours and midnight madness to help customers juggle the busy season and have time to shop for family and friends. It is also an incentive to shop locally for the holidays. In Woodstock, Martin Poirier, Community College News. The Christmas shopping season has arrived. Students on a budget may have a difficult time finding affordable gifts for the family. Our newsroom came up with some inexpensive gift ideas for this holiday season. I even thought about it at all. For Christmas thing? Uh, well, not a whole lot really, I guess. Try and work as much as I can. Don't really have much of a budget because uh, I'm poor and going to school. Well, I'm more or less on a time budget myself, so I'm just buying gift cards for everyone. <laughs> Trying to come up with inexpensive Christmas ideas when on a budget may be challenging. So we in the community college newsroom came up with a few inexpensive gift ideas for the holidays. When buying for a gamer or a movie fan, pawn shops may be a good place to start. Some shops have movies for as cheap as $2, and it's not likely you will have to spend more than $20 on a game. And there's always a chance of finding some hidden treasures while there. Ken Hathaway works at the local pawn shop and believes that they have the best prices in town. We have games for all of those systems and often they're at a fraction of the price that what you could buy them anywhere else in town. If you have a credit card and some self-control, eBay can be a valuable resource. You can find anything and everything on your shopping list, and shop by sorting items by price, so it's easy to tell what's in your price range. For artistic people, a great option might be drawing or painting something for a family member. But if you're not artistic, don't worry. Try writing personalized letters or even poems. I actually make a lot of my Christmas presents for best friends and stuff, scrapbooking and whatnot. Personalized coupons might also be the perfect gifts you can make for your loved ones. Fill them out with anything from one shoveled driveway or even offer to prepare Christmas dinner. But what most parents want from their kids is for them to be home. So strap a bow to your head and try and find a way to make it home for Christmas. In Woodstock, Tony Bourgeois, Community College News. Faculty and staff at NBCC Woodstock took part in a strategic planning meeting on Tuesday. The Strat Chat session focused on fostering ties between college departments and establishing a strategic direction for the organization. Consultant Kathleen Howard facilitated the meeting. When we call them Strat Chat, so strategic conversations. So it's really about how do you engage people in learning about the future. This is about how do you keep current, how do you keep present, how do you keep everybody learning. Local business people were also invited to the session in an attempt to strengthen the college's ties to the community. Finding a sitter can be as easy as flipping through your local newspaper or asking your neighbor to watch your children. Families who have children with special needs may not find the search to be easy. Jocelyn Turner has more. Should I use different colors for the letters? Maybe I will. Beth Jordan Sletton works on a birthday card with one of her clients. Jordan Sletton moved to New Brunswick from Saskatchewan and says finding the job with her current client was by chance. We met at the local water pump and I asked him if... Uh, 
Yeah, his son had uh, was attending a day program, if there was such a thing in this town, because I had looked for one and hadn't been able to find one. Jordan Sletton says there are a few support workers in the area. The struggle could be because the pay is low. The pay is about half of what it is in Saskatchewan, so the, the better the pay, the more likely you are to attract workers to it. Traveling can be an issue for support workers. Another support worker commutes long distances and says bad weather may mean a late arrival. Usually you're traveling about probably anywhere between a half an hour to 45 minutes or an hour. Families in southeastern New Brunswick rely on active care support services, but the program has a high staff turnover. Pay inequity, so the training that goes into uh, what you need to qualify to be a support worker, they are, you know, disheartened when the when the workers get actually out into the job, they realize that uh, the pay is not going to cut it in a lot of cases for them. Both support workers agree with McAllister. They say traveling is a disadvantage to workers and clients. You know, everybody wants to work great within the urban community. They don't want to, uh, to travel if they don't have to. McAllister also says the workers he has had over the years do not stay with support services very long. He says staff can handle more clients, even with the decrease in number of support workers. Jocelyn Turner, Community College News. Everyone likes to save money. The Fallsbrook Centre gave a seminar earlier this week on simple renovations that could save you thousands. The seminar explored new home renovations and government grants. Jason Yerlink discussed how simple things like insulation can be great long-term investments and could save homeowners hundreds of dollars every year. Yearlink was disappointed by the low turnout. Yeah, kind of. But it's, it's hard getting people out. I mean, we, we write articles and we put up posters and it, it's hard getting people out to these things, even if they are, they are free. Like. He is concerned that people are not aware or simply do not care about issues close to home. NBCC Woodstock held an open house this week. High school students had the opportunity to see the school and the different programs offered. Kyle Dupont has more. High school students were roaming the halls of the college for the showcase event. They had a chance to see what goes on in different programs. The day offers a unique look at what they can expect in a post-secondary environment. Students watched the licensed practical nursing program in action and had a chance to try out some of the landscaping equipment. Our Brad Perry spoke with Erica Elliott of District 14. I think it definitely shows them what's available and gives them some things to think about and an opportunity to ask questions and that probably will help to set them on a path. Our journalism class set up a camera and prompter in the newsroom. We gave students the chance to test their skills as an anchor. More clips like these will appear in future episodes. Hello, I am Elizabeth Williamson from Heartland Community School. I visited the New Brunswick Community College in Woodstock and toured the journalism program and others. My favorite program is journalism. For more NBCC news stories, go to jschoolnbcc.ca. Other NBCC campuses will be holding similar events throughout the year. High school students got to see exactly what goes on in the newsroom. As they toured, they got to see first and second year students working to produce this particular show. In the college newsroom, Kyle DuPont, Community College News. Somber weather overshadowed Remembrance Day ceremonies across the province last Friday. Yet the heavy rain in Sackville did not prevent people from taking part. As the veterans marched the streets, people stood to honor their heroic efforts of the past. Rain-soaked people gathered at the local cenotaph to remember the sacrifices made by our soldiers throughout history. Wreaths were laid at the foot of the monument in honor of fallen loved ones. The rain died down before the ceremony began in Woodstock. Order! Quick! March! Veterans marched up Main Street to the cenotaph. Along with the veterans, the local RCMP and police and fire departments all took part. Many young cadets representing the future of our armed forces joined the procession. Premier David Allward also attended. That's our show for this week. Please send us your story ideas at jschoolnbcc at gmail.com or to see more of our work, go to jschoolnbcc.ca. Thank you for watching. <laughs>